Hello everyone, welcome back to a very smoky Olive City homestead. We've got wildfires going on. It seems like, I'm sorry to say, as usual here in August. Wildfires are burning all around us again. It just seems like it's becoming the norm for this time of year, August through November, for us to be having wildfires here in Northern California. A very celebratory month for me in one way is that last year at this time in August, I was putting out my very first garden tour, my very first video on this YouTube channel. And I can't believe it's been a whole year. I've had so much fun and learned so much both in what I'm doing and in following so many other people's YouTube channels. But yes, it's more fires now, just like last summer and last fall. Uh, last September 8th, I did a video where I woke up in the morning and it looked like the apocalypse. Much, much worse than this. And that is the fire that took out my daughter's oncology camp and the entire town around it. All of paradise here in Northern California burned to the ground then. And so many other places went through similar trauma through fire last summer and fall. And it's happening again this year and it's really difficult. And somehow we survive in the middle in this valley. We haven't yet been touched by the fires themselves, merely by the smoke, the ash, and the refugees that come this way. And one of the things that has really surprised me, I guess, and impressed me the most is how nature has responded to these wildfires. And while entire towns and forests have been wiped out, nature has still rebounded. And I've gone back to the same places and been astonished at how fast nature has brought things back to life again. And that is the one hope we have um, when we see destruction like this, is that we know nature will do what it does best and bring life back from what looks like complete destruction. So I know that the places, just like my daughter's oncology camp, that have burned to the ground, they will come back again in one form or another because that's what humans do. We face our challenges, we fight, we survive, and we come back again stronger than ever. Meanwhile, today, after a year of doing this YouTube channel and learning so much, <laughs> and another year of gardening where I definitely learned a lot, especially about squirrels, uh, we are going to do another garden tour. So come with me and see what is happening here in the intense heat and smoky skies of mid-August 2021. One thing that has done super well this summer, despite the intense heat and no rain at all, is the peppers. The peppers have loved the intense heat and they've all done well. Um, as we go through, you're going to notice little white specks on a lot of the leaves. I've shaken most of them off of this plant. This is a poblano ancho. All those white specks are just ash floating down in the smoke. This plant is full of peppers. They're kind of difficult to see because they are such a dark green. They match the leaves perfectly, but it, it is full. And here I have got one of my new plantings, a delicata squash, and a bunch of walking green onions coming up, different stages of growth. I've planted them all over the place, so uh, that's how I like to do it. About 90% of the time they come up and do super well, and uh, Therefore, I have green onions anytime I want them. And in this container, I've got some sweet shishitos and some grand marconis. I just uh, pick peppers every single day, dozens and dozens of them every single day. Uh, just yesterday, I picked a grand marconi that was about five and a half, six inches long. It was huge. Uh, more green onions coming up in here, too. And these are my probably latest planting of peppers, and they're finally starting to produce. You really don't see the dozens and dozens of peppers until you get up close. They are snacking red peppers. Obviously, something has been enjoying the leaves a little bit, but it's certainly uh, not hurting the plants. <laughs> they are growing taller and taller, sending out more and more blossoms even as they are full of green peppers that are very slowly turning red let's see if i can find red one like i said i harvest them every day but oh here's one on this one hey there you go 
And my official pepper bed, my cayenne plant, is now about four feet tall and still producing like crazy. And there's my aurora plant still going strong. And then what have I got? Oh, my Jimmy Nardello plant still producing plenty of Jimmy Nardellos. This plant, the Fatale, it's always full of blossoms, but it never really looks super healthy. And um, it's only produced a few peppers. And my Corbachi plants, I've got two of them. They're doing great. Produced hundreds of peppers so far. Along with the Cubanelle, which also has produced an enormous amount of peppers this year. Now these plants right here on the end, the Corbachis and the Cubanelle, have had some um, slight aphid issues. But as you can see, ladybugs have moved in and they are doing their job. Here is one on the underside of this leaf. I don't think the video is going to focus, so I might just slip in a picture of it here. It's in the process of transforming itself, morphing into what we know as the ladybug. Uh, I also put a picture of it as it looks before it starts changing because a lot of people are not familiar with what a ladybug looks like before it becomes your typical ladybug. But yeah, isn't that interesting? Here I've got some more ladybugs on my borage plant. So I'm just letting them go to town on these plants here on the end. The other pepper plants have done much better in the sense of not getting any bugs at all. These pepper plants are the only ones other than my uh, yellow squash plants that actually suffered from any kind of bugs this year. And despite the bugs, they um, kept producing. <laughs> so I was right about this quote, weed. It wasn't a weed. I knew it looked like something familiar. I just couldn't put my finger on it till it started blossoming. And then I knew it's a tomatilla. Uh, tomatillas are supposed to need another tomatilla plant to cross-pollinate to produce fruit. Uh, once I've had one do it on its own, so it's probably like a lot of trees and plants where it will do much better with another plant, but it probably can produce some on its own. So I've left this one grow out in the middle of uh, the yard to see what it does. Some more seedlings coming up. This is again some... Uh, delicata squash I've started should grow well into the fall and mm, some society garlic there and some coreopsis well the okra bed is doing fine it's also got orange zinnias everywhere and green onions coming up there's a random amaranth there's also a buttercup squash over there but it's got some aphids on it uh, it's one of those two squash plants, the yellow squash and the, this buttercup that had some aphid issues. However, again, they both have produced um, over there is the, some more of the yellow buttercup and yellow squash in that bed. And they've continued to produce prolifically all summer. So I haven't been too worried about those. We don't have uh, sign borers here so that's been great. <laughs> and my zucchini plants, once I got past the squirrel issue cross my fingers I think I'm past the squirrel issue um, they've done fine so they're in here and although it looks like there's bugs on them that's actually just ash from the fires and they have done great inside this tool so the tool was the lifesaver that I hoped it would be and I have pulled dozens and dozens of zucchini squash off these two plants uh, over the last six weeks I've also pulled several off of oh, not these two they keep coming back uh, off of this one here on the end so yeah it worked to tool them the problem on this end was the squirrels managed to find little holes or make little holes and sneak in so what I did was then uh, after like the fourth or fifth time they ate it down I put a second tool around the first and they haven't been able to get in at all since then and so these are coming back and I might get some zucchini off them too in the fall. And next to them we've got uh, five and six and a half feet tall uh, tomatoes and they are still full-fledged blossoming and growing more tomatoes. These are both Sweet 100s and um, my favorite, these Sun Gold orange ones. And I pull dozens and dozens, big bowlfuls off of my 
tomato plants, my cherry tomato plants every day. Now here is my main cherry tomato bed. And again, I harvest off of it every single day because that's the only way to keep up with it. On this side, I have a mixture of uh, Sweet 100s or some sort of hybrid red cherry tomato that's very sweet. And the orange sun golds that I love so much. The lighting today, I can tell, is just terrible for the colors of these fruits, but that's because of the smoke. Um, we have had no sun at all for a couple weeks. I mean, it was 115 Fahrenheit yesterday. It's supposed to be 108 Fahrenheit today, but there's no sun. It's just brown skies smoke. Let me see if I can show you the skies. I don't know. That probably just looks gray, but it's actually very brown and thick around you. It's really acrid. It's made wanting to come out and garden kind of difficult because well I enjoy the sunshine and if I'm gonna have heat I really do want to have sun and blue skies but you know your plants need you whether it's enjoyable outside or not so one fun thing here are the green onions the Egyptian walking onions that I planted up here a few weeks ago and uh, most of them as you can see have taken off and are growing just fine in here. In fact, they all are, but uh, most are growing faster. There's a couple that are a little slow starting, but I love having green onions everywhere you go because I use them so much in cooking and also just raw in salads and burritos and things like that. <laughs> oh, the ducks are saying, hey, you're near us. Come give us some leaves. Here you go. <laughs> I used to feed them tree collards as well as the dinosaur kale, but they quickly let me know that they had developed a favorite, and it is the dinosaur kale, or lacinato kale. So that's what I give them mostly now for fun, for treats. This is some random yellow pear tomatoes growing here amongst the kale that I grow by the duck fence. They love it when I throw their food in the water, too. <laughs> this little corner over by my table and the ducks behind it is just some flowers and walking onions. And I think I have some rhubarb tucked in here next to my purple print zinnias. Yeah, right down in there. Got some rhubarb growing. I have it growing in another spot that has a little more shade and it's doing super well there. Not been successful with rhubarb in the past, but this year I have been. Some mums, walking onions, mm, some more mums coming up and starting to bloom actually again. And here we have some really nice snapdragons. I love that kind of coral color. And my chicken is growing some green onions and some pretty augustache. Also, I am loving this spider flower plant. It's gotten so tall. It's about four feet tall now. Growing next to some augustache. And, of course, more Egyptian walking onions and a random yellow pear tomato. Oh, there's another delicata squash I planted recently. But I like sitting in my little corner at my table. Need to refill that uh, bird bath. The birds do come to it. And I really enjoyed how pretty the purple print zinnias have been. Uh, the leaves don't always look the healthiest, but the flowers are just gorgeous. And they just keep spreading out and blooming more. So I'm definitely gonna be growing more uh, zinnias in the coming years because this is in just a little pot about a five gallon pot but i've also planted some of these over in my asparagus bed in the ground and they've done super well there too so yeah i have really enjoyed this little flower corner and in fact it's inspired me to want to make more flower corners and flower 
um, beds are here and there throughout the garden. So that's a new plan for this coming year. Here's some more rhubarb growing here next to my chicken fence. And some more doing well in here. My problem is I never know when to harvest it. I've got to research that. Lemongrass doing as great as ever and still delicious in tea. Remember, if you haven't tried it in tea, you must because it's so good. Over here on the other side of the lemongrass are some containers with some, what is it? It is melon, Emerald Jim Melon, which I have a few in here. Let's see if I can find them. Okay, there are two hanging there. Can you see them both? They hide out pretty well, which is good because no possums or squirrels are bothering them. Remember those plants growing from the bottom of this container out one of the drain holes? They are surviving. Hello, Bee. Visiting my Emerald Jim Melon blossoms. In fact, this one plant coming out of this drain hole has a fruit on it. Look at that. It's developing a ground cherry with its little green husk. I think I'm going to get ground cherries out of this plant coming out of the bottom of my melon container. That is so crazy, but fun. The other plant's still growing too, but it's much smaller than the first one. And I think it shows signs of getting too much water, a little bit of yellowing there. So we'll see what happens with these, but I do think I'm going to get some fruit off that one. All right, in this bed, I've got my uh, purple TP beans, bush beans starting to grow well. And in the middle, I have planted a Gara plant, which has, it was like on the verge of death, got it on clearance. And uh, not sure if you can see, but there's a lot of green coming out of there on all the branches. So I think we have revived it. And it's going to be fun to see that grow. And on this side, I've got some more, uh, melon plants. So these are all Emerald Jim melons. And my purple crepe myrtle in this pot is doing really well. It's bloomed for about a month now in this pot and it just keeps sending up more blooms. The lack of sun and the intense heat hasn't seemed to bother it. I mean, there have been times where it's been more full of blooms than others. Right now it's sort of one of its down times, but it just keeps recycling and I love that about it. Tree collar plant, I've got two of them and I cut them way down. I cut back at least two thirds of them, if not three fourths. They were huge and they still are huge. Uh, so I keep them going though because they make great compost tea and the chickens like to eat them. One of my eggplants, there's a pretty purple blossom on this. I've pulled several eggplants off of both of these plants so far. And in this little bed, if you can believe it, I've got one yellow pear tomato plant that has gone nuts here and just <laughs> grown everywhere. And in this corner over here, I have one mint plant that I've let go to blossom and the bees are all over it. And then here I planted in this 15 gallon container a delicata. And yeah, it's covered in the white speckly ash. More purple print zinnias next to the asparagus. Some more green onions and uh-huh, okra. Purple tree kale, even in 115 degree heat and uh, really drought-like conditions, is still going strong all summer long. This is six feet tall. And I am constantly having to prune it and take cuttings because it grows wide as it grows tall. Some yarrow and alyssum. There's some uh, laura petalum. Pin cushion. Uh, flowers, some scabiosa that I really need to deadhead, and some lantana that was a dead little stick that I popped in here. It's finally filled out, very lush green growth, and look at that, I see some blossoms starting to form. Old echinacea blooms. Look under there though, we've still got new growth coming out. 
Same can be said here for this dark purple alyssum coming out and this white alyssum. Talking about how wide the tree kale can get. Look at this. It's like oh, five and a half, six feet wide as well as six feet tall. This pot is one of my many experiments. It's hugging my uh, western facing wall and there you can see some lavender that uh, came from volunteer seedlings under my mother plant. And this, this basil plant here, it's three years old. <laughs> and it really takes a beating in the winter, looks totally dead, and takes a long time basically in the spring and early summer to come back. But by late summer and fall, I have basil again. And Egyptian walking onions right outside my kitchen door. And in one of my flower beds, got some purple fountain grass getting taller and taller and taller. It's about, mm, it's over my height, so it's about 5'8", five, 5'10", five, because I'm only 5'6". And down here we've got some purple salvia starting to bloom and some echinacea. And looky here, some gorgeous little dahlias. And down here is something I want to show you because you know what? Not everything looks perfect or great or even good in a garden. <laughs> so I've got some uh, oxalis clover down there I need to pull out. And I've got a lot of dead green onions here that I didn't plant. Little walking tops. But look what's come out the bottom. Despite all of that, I have tons of new, fresh, healthy green walking onion growth. So I just need to clean this area up. And we've got more edible and, yes, beautiful down there, veggies for our garden, even amidst the flowers. And on this side, some beautiful Mexican heather. It's got some dead spots, too. I'm just not showing you them. Well, there's one. But, yeah, Mexican heather is super hardy, so even if parts of it die off, it's always growing. In fact, some people call it invasive, but I haven't found that to be the case. It is easy, though, to start more from cuttings. Garlic chives. I've let them start to flower finally after having cut them back and used them many, many times already this season. But they're perennial. They just keep growing. These are three years old, and the ones on the other side are five years old, doing really well. A black cherry tomato. It doesn't really look black, does it? I've had a few of them so far, and actually, they do taste pretty good. I might have to try growing them more, uh, what's the word, more carefully, more intensively. <laughs> Out in the sun, I tried experimenting in grow bags, but on my covered patio this year. And although I did get a lot of cherry tomatoes, um, they definitely didn't do as well here as they do out in the sunshine. And some more dahlias, tequila sunrise, I believe. But I'm not sure, actually. I have to look that up. And an update on my transplants from runners, the Itea Virginia Sweet Spires. All are doing great. Look at all those fresh green leaves. This was the bare stem one. It's got leaves. All of this is new growth. New growth. Even this one. That's not a new growth leaf, but all the nodes show signs of new growth. So overall, all five runner transplants I took from that Mother Virginia Sweet Spire plant are looking super established and healthy four weeks later. Blossoms everywhere, despite the heat and smoke. All right, next to the dianthus and the verbena and the augustache and the walking onions I recently planted from the little baby plants at the tops of my older plants, I have this plant growing here. A few days ago, it was smaller than this, and now here it is up to here. Do you know what these are? 
I know what these are because this is the fourth year in a row it's happened. So over four years ago, when I first started this bed, I layered the bottom with food scraps and chicken manure and a wide variety of homegrown compost. And the first spring, the whole bed was covered in these plants, which turned out, of course, you probably already guessed, to be potatoes. And that was great. It was a sh surprise, a big surprise, and um, because they were buried pretty deep. Uh, this has settled down now, but um, when I put it in, I had it all the way to the top, all the way across. So those spuds were at the bottom and they yet came up. That was great, all right. I never put any more um, potatoes in this bed, scraps or otherwise, never. And then the second year they came up again, about half as much as the first year. Then last year, the third year, they came up again. At that time there was just a few and I couldn't even believe it. I mean, I'd grown several other crops in here and I hadn't ever again put any more potatoes in here. And look at this, four years now. In the spring this year I did get a couple and I was cracking up thinking, what in the world? And here it is, August, and I've got more potatoes coming up. <laughs> I have to wonder, are they going to come up like 10 years from now from those really old potato scraps? Nature is funny. All right, on this side of my chicken run and my southern olive orchard, I have my little herb bed planted. I do have herbs scattered throughout the whole garden and actually around my house, front and back of my property. But here is my row of herbs right up the chicken run that I grow a lot of them. And this is my big lemon verbena plant that started off so small and now no matter how much I cut it back, which I do every year, it still is huge. And in fact, this looks like it's blown sideways, but it's actually grown sideways. And I'm thinking I'm gonna have to cut that one off because it's growing into the walkway to where I get to my chicken door. So, you know, I want it to actually grow upright, not sideways. So I wanna encourage this growth rather than that growth going sideways. So down in here, I have some basil and walking onions coming up echinacea which has already bloomed a few times some more walking onions these are all new uh, of course they had their spring growth which we've been eating all spring and summer and now this is their new late summer growth they grow year-round they never stop growing they're perennial I highly suggest you grow them because they taste wonderful and this is my English thyme my oregano and more walking onions and there's some lime thyme and uh, some little violas trying to come up there. Various flowers, bulbs in the back. And in here I have all planted against the uh, back of the bed so that it can grow up the fence. In the pots and in the bed itself, I've been planting uh, Chinese long red noodle beans, which I love. Now, you might think, well, the chickens will get them. I know, I'm gonna try to just attach them a little higher maybe put something in front of the fence there to keep the vines from attaching too low but i think if i can get them to attach about here the chickens won't be able to get them that's the plan anyway because i think they'll grow really well in this spot um so i pruned back most of the winter savory i've only let the flowers stay at the back along the fence line <coughs> there i've got some more echinacea it's looking a little tired in the heat, but I think it'll have a comeback in the fall. And there are some more green onions. Yeah, they're everywhere, and that's a good thing. Uh, I've got some basil doing fabulous in this pot. It's the best, actually, that I've done with basil this year. I've got this pot and another pot, and uh, because of where they're located, I think they've done super well, and also because I've stayed on top of pitching them back. There we've got some green sorrel starting to come back a bit from the intense heat of the summer. I don't know why, because it's still really hot. <laughs> and then my beautiful purple blooming oregano, which I had cut back a lot of it. I mean, it was much larger than this. And so 
yeah, I, I love the flowers. <laughs> but still, there's plenty of oregano there that I harvest fresh, and I regularly do prune back some and take it in and dehydrate it too. More onions and some Thai basil. Looking pretty there. I am going to pull out that sage. It's just, that tricolor sage died off. I cut it back. There is a little bit of new growth, but sage just isn't doing well in this location. I've tried it now for four years, and it's just not doing well here. So I'm going to try sage in other spots around the property. And then the bee balm, which is starting to grow up again, new growth. I actually have a bunch of seedlings down there that I need to pull out. And I also have some green onions that have... I kind of threw the tops there and they started to sprout there. That's what they do. Overall, I've really enjoyed my herb bed and uh, I'm going to plant in this spot later today my rue plant, which I've had in a pot for a while trying to decide where to put it, but I think I'm going to put it here. But yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you on the next tour all the Chinese red noodle beans. Hopefully, hopefully the chickens won't have devoured them all. They'll leave them for me. <laughs> still have some beautiful sunflowers they didn't really do as well this year as they usually do and I think that's due to the heat which led to other issues um, but despite all that we still have some really pretty blooms throughout the whole summer I'm gonna replant sunflowers along this wall and see if I can get them to grow in the fall. Because believe me, we have heat that'll be here through November. <laughs> I'm just hoping that the sun will come back. That would be really nice. But meanwhile, I appreciate beauty in whatever form I find it, wherever it may be, and uh, know that there are many kinds of beauty and each can be appreciated, enjoyed, for what it is. Almost time to harvest these pears. They look very delicious to me. Also gonna need to do some pruning because got a lot of this brand new growth coming on that's going straight up and we don't want that. Fruit, fruit, and more fruit. I love it. And more fruit. Well, last month, I harvested the Suncrest Peach, and this month it's time to harvest the Rio Oso Jim Semi Dwarf Peach. I've got them staggered a month apart so that I'm not inundated with too many peaches at once. But the birds are starting to get to them, so it's time to take them off now. Actually, I've already taken off about 50, and I'd say there's another 100 at least on the tree. Be interesting to see if I underestimate because with I did underestimate with the Suncrest last month and ended up getting about 250 off of that tree. But this tree is not as full as that one because uh, I did have a couple of branches break off um, last year because I didn't thin the tree enough and so it was overweight on some of those branches and that's what happens. Definitely need to thin peaches and other fruits so you don't end up breaking a branch but the tree has bounced back and looks super healthy and has given me like I said a lot of peaches already. We do love peaches here and I've been very pleased with these two trees and I'm certainly looking forward to a lot of peach cobbler in the next few days. Thanks for joining me today folks and I will see you again next week. Meantime don't forget you can create the life you want. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise.